And good morning. Not one single person out here in my audience is going to remember a show called The Gong Show. Um, I'm showing my age. It was one of my favorite things when I was a kid. And the MC for The Gong Show was used to say, and that's stuff. So today we're going to talk about some stuff before we move on to the rest of our prism stuff. Gotta be kidding. <laughs> wow. Number one, the prescription for PRISM isn't really our problem. That's up to a doctor, a refractionist, a practitioner, someone who has the tools and the knowledge necessary, mostly a phoropter, to determine what a person needs in order to have everything align correctly. There are some really good examples on the Optician Works website. Uh, I once had a sponsor that gave me access to a professional artist or illustrator. There's some really good stuff there. I would encourage you to check out that section and you'll pick up there a whole lot more about the how we write a prescription, where that stuff comes from, why we use it and all those things because that again is not really our problem. Number two then is what is then our problem? Some things that we're going to cover in the next couple of video segments. Again, believe it or not, tiny little baby steps again before we go jumping into Prentice's formula and solving in the math and all that good stuff. We're going to talk a little bit about the language of PRISM. What does that stuff that's written on the prescription mean? Things like base in base out, base up, base down, compounding, canceling, resultant, all that terminology that goes with it. We're going to talk about that. Then we're going to talk about what is there? What, what prism is present in a pair of glasses? You have a new customer. That amount is unknown. And this is so important because Somewhere along the line, someone's going to hand you a pair of glasses and say, is there a prism in here? It'll tell you so much about the competency of an optician, how they respond to that question. So we're going to talk a whole lot about that. Then we have what is there when we know what is supposed to be there. That's verification. We get a pair back. Prescription called for PRISM. Is it there? Is it in the right place? Is it the right amount? Are these glasses going to work for that customer or patient? This is one of the few places I use patient over customer because there really is a heightened sense of a relationship between the doctor, practitioner, and the patient to get that prescription just right so that it works for them. We need to talk about what is created by an error. When an error is made, how much prism is created and is it enough to kick the job out? Is it enough to have the job fail in inspection? This is when we'll start using a little bit of Prentice's formula. I always like to point out over and over because it really kind of bothers me to be honest with you, that we spend so much time on this and that whole verification thing, and you'll get all those questions for ABO prep on it. If a job is wrong, send it back. If I, if I get a pair of glasses in, and I'm doing verification, I'm looking at them, they stink, the PD's off, the imbalance is this way, one OC's here, one's here. I'm not gonna go through all this rigmarole and work apprentices for me and say, well, it comes with intolerance. No, it was made wrong, send it back. Just always keep that in the back of your mind. Next is, what can we do to create wanted prism? 
There are a couple of different things. We can have it done by the lab. Sometimes we can just do it with a lens that we pull off the shelf. We'll talk about that. And then kind of connected to one in our last one here, our, our little monkey brain down here. Don't make yourself crazy over this stuff. I, I don't want to sound sarcastic or mean or anything, but the, the prison patient does have something off and something's not right, okay? One eye sees things one way and the other eye sees them another way. Um, so don't beat yourself up if you have a remake, if something just doesn't quite work, if they put them on and they say, no, that's not quite right kind of stuff. Sometimes there's a little give and take here. Sometimes it's a relationship between the prescriber, the doc, the patient, and you in between. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here on the language of PRISM. We will look at it. It's going to just develop. You're just going to kind of pick this up as you go. Um, you should also, of course, have already been through this stuff on the Optician Works website, so you should be familiar with it. Let's just talk about it a little bit, and I'm going to wrap up this particular piece with something really important. The universal sign for PRISM is a little triangle right there. Um, if you need it, it's actually uh, in your symbols and your word processing and stuff, so you can find it there if you need to use it in a document or something. PRISM will always come with an amount and a direction. There's no such thing as an amount without a direction or a direction without amount, an amount. As instance, two diopters base out. The Bs, BI base in, BO base out, BU base up, BD base down. What is that related to? To your schnoz, to your nose, to your beak. Pair of glasses, nose, up, down, in, out. Two words, two things that you should be familiar with already, but are extremely important here. The OC and the MRP idea. The OC, the optical center of the lens, is the point where the two prisms meet, either apex to apex or base to base. At that exact point, the, the perfect center of the optics of the lens, if I place that directly in front of the pupil or the visual axis of the eye, person experiences only the prescription value, no prism at all. If that lens shifts in any way away from that optical center and we place it deliberately somewhere else, it becomes the MRP or the major reference point. Those are pretty important things to keep in mind. That's some of the language that goes with it. When you are solving prism problems, particularly on paper, and I say draw them out, Always remember, the thing that is going to let you draw them out correctly is that the eyes don't move. My eyes don't move. I, I can't take my eyes and, you know, shift them in, out, left, up. The, the physical position of them. Yeah, I can roll my eyes and stuff. I'm saying within my head. I can't move them. I can move my lens around. And if my lens OC lines up, no prism. My lens OC doesn't line up, it's over here, up here, down here, or whatever, because I'm moving my lens around that point, then no prism, 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 no prism. Remember, the eyes don't move, the lenses move. Draw your lens as a prism over that fixed eye that doesn't move, and you'll get your questions right. So, do these glasses have prism in them? What you do in response to that question says almost everything about you 
as an optician. If you don't know what you're doing, you will probably first of all panic a little, and then you will probably take those glasses and head to the lens meter and then just kind of stand there. I wouldn't be surprised if there's at least one person where you work with an ABO cert who would do just that. Not a good thing. I'm going to tell you what you should do, why you should do it, and then we're going to learn the steps and why we're doing those steps. The correct answer when somebody runs in and says, do these glasses have prism in them? You can always say yes. Always, okay, 100% safe. All glasses are made from lenses. Lenses are prisms. Every single lens has the potential to produce prism depending on where it's worn. So every single pair of glasses on the planet has, they, they have prism, the potential to have prism, shall we say. So your, your first answer is always, yeah, the second question that you ask is, where's the customer? Because you need to visit with that person. Because the question of do they experience PRISM when they wear that particular pair of glasses is all about where they look through the lens. So you need to know that before you go to the lens meter and try to figure out what they're looking through. How do you do that? Meet and greet, sit down at the dispensing table, and you know what, just talk to them for a few minutes. Say, I understand we have a concern, there might be prism in the glasses, do you recall a history of that? Can you tell me anything about it? Do you have an old script? Who knows? Talk a little bit. Double check fit. Make sure they didn't just sit on their glasses. Make sure their grandkids didn't just pull them apart and stuff them down the, the furnace grate or something. Make sure they fit like they normally do. Dot them up. Dot them up as if you would be doing a progressive lens. Dot directly in front of their pupil exactly where they are looking through that lens. Take a PD, a nice good clean monocular PD with a pupillometer. When you have gathered that information, then you can head to the lens meter. After having marked up the lens, and there's tons of examples of that on the Optician Works website, mark your monocular PD, mark your OC height this way, so you know exactly where they're looking. Put that spot into the lens meter that is the point you're going to work from because that is the point where they are looking through the lens. We'll get into this in much greater detail, but in the big picture, you put it in the lens meter, it's right on target, it's right on target. No, no prism, they don't experience it, they're not wearing them funny, it's not prescribed, it's probably just a prescription. If you put it in at that dot and one of those targets is up here and one of them is down here, wherever it might be, they are off, they're different, yes. Then you can start getting into your reticle, reading the reticle inside the lens meter, determining how much, what direction, if they compound, if they cancel, all that good stuff. That is what we were talking about, that unknown, the new customer, new patient who comes in, and I guarantee sooner or later you're gonna have that scenario. So you be prepared. Is there a prism? Yes. Number two, where's the customer? Three, where do they look through the lens? Once you've determined that, only then do you head to the lens meter and start figuring out what is in there. Got it? Good. That was the unknown. The known means you know what you're supposed to have, let's make sure it's actually there. Let's say you had this script, it was in your hand, literally you're checking the job in. It says you're supposed to have two diopters of prism base up. When the glasses are placed in the lensometer correctly, right lens, sure enough, your OC target is displaced a perfect two 
diopters of prism, second prism ring, straight up. We're not going to get into verification. That's a completely separate lesson, completely separate idea. Um, we will talk about vertical imbalance, OC errors, which are part of the verification process. We're not going to do step-by-step -step verification here. That's on the website, and that'll be coming up in videos down the line. That's all I mean when I say, uh, you know, the known versus the unknown. You know what you're supposed to have. Does it show up correctly in the lens meter? Yes, it does. Great job goes out the door. The moral of this story is, if you're getting warts, you're doing it fine. Yeah. Take care.